Good Sunday morning to you, everyone. I'm Paul Mueller. Thank you so much for joining us this half hour. In the race for Attorney General, last week we sat down with former Hillsborough judge and now Republican candidate Ashley Moody. This week, we turn to the Democrats and another Tampa native in the hunt to replace outgoing Attorney General Pam Bondi. Candidate Ryan Torrens is a Tampa attorney, joins us this morning for our Sunday one on one. Good to have you here this morning. Thank you so much yeah, for having sure, me. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I, I want to start with, uh, with your qualifications for Attorney General. Uh, and uh, on your website, on your campaign website, you say, quote, for more than four years, Ryan Torrens has been going to battle in court against the biggest banks in the country uh, on behalf of Florida's consumers. Now, you focus much of your law practice on fighting home foreclosures and consumer protection lawsuits, but the attorney general uh, job is the state's top law enforcement officer, not just the top consumer advocate. So that being said, there's a big difference there. How are you going to be prepared to, to make up that difference, make up the slack, if you will? Thank you. You know, there's actually not as much of a difference as people think. In fact, the Attorney General of Florida is supposed to be Florida's top consumer advocate, handling consumer complaints, pr protecting our seniors from fraud, uh, protecting our people from abusive debt collectors and big creditors that are trying to violate their rights. There is the Office of Statewide Prosecution, and, this, and the Attorney General does defend the state in criminal appeals, but a large bulk of the work that the Attorney General does it is protecting our people. Unfortunately, as of late, they haven't been doing a very good job of it. And so you're talking about Pam Bondi specifically, you're, you're targeting her in that? Well, I, I think that this problem goes back many years. Mm -hmm. It's not just Attorney General Bondi. There is a lot of work to be done in the area of consumer protection, and it just goes down uh, to the fundamental principle of the same rules should apply to everyone, no matter how privileged you think you are or how much money you have. Okay, I, I want to take a, a statement also from uh, your website as well. Um, you say, quote, you will not accept a penny in donations from Wall Street. So we went ahead and took a look at your campaign numbers. Um, at the last check, you had raised about $22,000. Uh, on the show last week, as we said, we had, uh, you know, uh, we had Ashley Moody on the show. She has raised, up to date, as of last check, more than half a million dollars. So 22000 to half a million dollars. How can you, um, how can you make up, pick up the slack in that? How do you do that? Well, first, I would say one of the reasons for that difference is that we're not taking special interest money. Mm -hmm. Our largest contribution that we have is from a law firm that is literally called the Consumer Protection Law Firm. Our donations are from our everyday voters, from everyday citizens who are looking for a change. That was our first month, and in fact, I am proud of that because I am a first-time candidate. Those donations came from all over the state of Florida, and if I'm elected attorney general, those are the people that I'm going to be fighting for, not the special interest who can write a check for thirty or forty thousand dollars to a candidate. I am running to fight for our people, and I think that our campaign finance report reflects who we are fighting for. One of the things I always say is follow the money. Most of her donations, though, I believe, are what is it, one to th to three thousand dollars, though. Uh, one example would be a check that I saw for $10,000 from Tico. You're talking about into, into her campaign more checks? A absolutely, and we saw the, uh, the article recently in the Tampa Bay Times on what's happening with their workers. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's just one example. All right, so uh, let's talk about the, uh, the major change, that, as you know, in Florida's stand your ground law. The, uh, the burden of proof has now shifted to the prosecutors. They're now required to prove someone was not acting in self-defense when deadly force was used. The question I have is, uh, where do you stand on this issue? You know, on the stand your ground issue, first I would say that, you know, obviously our laws are passed by our legislature. Uh, as the attorney general, I would not have the ability to pass laws. Uh, there is currently litigation going through the courts on the legality of the stand your ground statute. Uh, as the attorney general, my job would be to enforce our laws, assuming that they are uh, upheld by the courts. This is a sensitive subject, and it is one where you know we have to balance the rights of our responsible gun owners with the protection of our children and our families. So, do you believe in how it's changed? Then that it has changed, and you believe in, in this and that you would go ahead and go with that since lawmakers have gone, gone ahead and uh, pushed that through? My job would be to enforce the laws that are upheld by the courts. So it, but it would make it tough, though, on, on prosecutors. 
My understanding of the law as it stands now is uh, that it has made it more tough on prosecutors because the burden has shifted. Mm -hmm. And that was a decision that was made by our legislature to do that. I didn't have a say in that. Uh, that was our legislature. You know, and you're, you're basically a political newcomer, if you will, too. I just want to get back to what you said before. Sure. Uh, do you think that, that represents that, uh, the fact when, when people hear that you're a p political newcomer, that you're uh, fresh blood up there in, in Tallahassee, that, you know, you're, you're not part of the uh, political establishment? That's right. And you know, I don't owe any favors to anybody. I am a small business owner, a private citizen, and a consumer lawyer. And so far, that has been an advantage because mm -hmm. people want something new. They want someone who doesn't owe any favors to anyone. I have 45 seconds left, and yeah. I want to talk to you really quickly about the opioid crisis. 2015, sure. a 22% increase in opioid-related deaths. And last week, Governor Scott signed tough new laws on opioid dealers. Where do you stand on the issue? Rehabil rehabilitation or punishment? There's a law enforcement component, and there's also a rehabilitation component. I have had my own battle with alcohol addiction in the past, and fortunately, through the support of family and my partner, Francesca, as well as the program of Alcoholics Anonymous, I achieved sobriety. Our people are desperate for leadership on this issue. It, the silly season in Tallahassee needs to come to an end. These people are suffering from addiction and need treatment. That's the only way we deal with this underlying issue of addiction. And I'm ready to provide that leadership so we can put this crisis to an end and our people will stop dying. So rehabilitation then is the answer. The, the issue is that they are suffering from addiction. There are underlying issues that are causing that addiction. That's the only way we solve the underlying problem. All right, Democratic candidate for Attorney General General Ryan Torrance, we appreciate you joining us this morning. Thank you.